Carl Kasgard here at Halifax 57 Rescue Show 16. And we're very pleased to have given you, presented to you, all 15 of our first shows since the start of the year. And uh, yes, we're going gangbusters. There's lots of things happening. And uh, Scott Knox, who's uh, doing the main airframe rebuild, uh, he's got uh, a business priorities today and he can't be with us. So you'll have to put up with me. So let me explain that we have been, even though it's been a week, we've been making great progress. And I can tell you first about the Bomber Command Museum activities. And we've got a, a very nice video here showing all the hard work. We have a Hercules engine team that's rebuilding the Halifax bomber engines. And we've taken engine number two off the yellow engine run trailer. And we pulled number three engine that we've been waiting several years to test run. Number three is a brand new Halifax bomber engine, a Hercules 14 cylinder radio. And uh, we've got Hugh and Bob and yours truly. And uh, we're putting the number three engine on the yellow trailer. And fingers crossed within the next two weeks, we will do a test run of this uh, Hercules engine, which has been sitting in a shop, in a crate, in England for over 50 years. Four out of six ain't bad. Now we're going to, we've uh, pre-oiled it, we've inspected it internally, we've checked all the components, and now we're just about ready to run. So these are the informative, exciting days leading up to resurrecting, awakening, a sleeping giant. Make that line up. Forgy. How okay. I'm losing my hair. This is called Bristol Hercules. This is the reason for hair loss, okay? Okay, just wait. I'm within a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, it's moving. Can you get one more? And you'll see the guys are busting their buns to get another number three engine for the Halifax bomber. That is, we got five out of six, and then you can't get that last pin in. It's one sixteenth of an inch to get that pin in. And if you're out that much, it doesn't go. That was the engine uh, installation that we were working on. And now, of course, we've been sharing with you the uh, exciting world record-breaking lift of a Halifax bomber from 700 feet underwater. And uh, Dag Amarud and uh, the Norwegian team uh, got a hold of, uh, inserted the lifting device under the Halifax. And here's the money shot, folks. Uh, these are the clips of the Halifax coming out of 700 feet of water. And uh, it was an exciting time. Uh, for everyone. Unfortunately, I had to go back to Canada for a family emergency. And uh, so uh, Jeff Jeffrey and uh, uh, Doug Rutley and all the crew uh, were there when the Halifax came out of the deep. You got to see this, folks. Absolutely stunning. And uh, I'll just uh, let the images speak for itself a beautiful lift of a historic airplane. As the weather clears, Moby Grip is once again positioned in front of the plane. It is important to note that the aircraft is leaning to one side, thus the device must be inserted on an angle. The lifting device alone weighs over 2,500 pounds and the cable attached to the barge must be strong enough to lift the entire aircraft from the bottom. Inside the control room, final calculations are made. Dag uses the ROV monitors to watch each and every move of the operation. 
At times, he wonders if the plane will ever give way to his recovery attempts. He knows that once the aircraft is on the lift, there's no turning back. One mistake here, and the plane could go crashing down to the bottom. A final attempt is made to ease the lifting device into place. Steadied by the ROV and the extra guidelines attached to the tugboat on the surface, Moby Grip slides into position. Surprisingly, after a few moments, the gauges on the barge registered a dag in the crew that the plane has freed itself. The time has come to lift the plane. As the Halifax reaches the surface, Jeff and Dag are elated to see the main body of the aircraft. Overnight, the plane is slowly lowered onto a special towing sled as preparations are made at the beaching area. But time is running out. Within 12 hours, Jeff will have to return to Canada. So Doug, I guess you're taking uh, Jeff off to the airport. Is that the plan? Uh, oh, no, I actually, uh, I think uh, Jeff's uh, finally made a decision on this. Uh, he's going to... Uh, uh, stick it out and uh, actually see the airplane come up. Uh, we're not that far away, but if he's to make his airplane, he's got to leave almost immediately. So he's going to tough it out and stay here for uh, until the uh, airplane is done. What made your decision there, Joe? I just couldn't leave. It's, it's too, too damn important. I got to be here. It's almost there, and I can't walk away with it almost being there. I want to see it. So. To hell with everything else, the world stops right now and I'm going to stay here until it's up. After four weeks of attempting to raise the Halifax, it is now time to see it break the surface of the water. With the cable wheel rolling, the magnificent Halifax is about to make its return. What an incredible story. The lives of so many people are caught up in the excitement, anticipating the plane's arrival. With powerful emotions changing by the minute, the Canadians, the British, and the Norwegians are about to see a dream come true. What many had said was an impossible mission is now becoming a reality. As the heavy cable continues to pull the Halifax towards the beach, we learned that this was not the first time Thomas Waitman had endured such a terrifying experience. Sometime before the mission over Norway with Halifax NA-337, Thomas had been on a training flight in another aircraft. The plane had gone down with a full crew on board, and incredibly, once again, Thomas had been the only survivor. In his quiet manner, Thomas Waitman admitted to having a series of dreadful nightmares since that tragic night in 1945. Jeff Jeffrey had a very special surprise for Thomas Waitman. When you took off, what did you take with you? Just a cup of co uh, a flask of coffee. That was all, maybe. That was all. You don't have any coffee tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll get some later. I've got the. I, I think we got some here. Coffee. I think we got some here for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say on there? <laughs> you can't read your name? I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I thought they'd been rusted away by now. In fact, you know, With that bloody coffee you guys made? Have you tired it? Have you no, tired I, the I coffee? Would, I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> that might be still hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, there you are. The best coffee you made. Yeah, I know. So, but now as the aircraft is beginning to break the surface, there is something different in the air. This time it is a sign of hope a sign of triumph. The DACON crew temporarily stops the cable device to make a quick inspection of the plane. We find the aircraft is still in excellent condition, considering it had to withstand the underwater elements for over 50 years. Now we can see the 
just inches below the surface, you can just barely make out the nose section, which has been partially crushed, probably from the impact of the crash. As Jeff studies the starboard wing, the engines, and the air intakes, he is confident that the plane can be restored to its original state. Now it's just a matter of pulling the plane about 200 feet to the shore. Even the cockpit appears to be intact. Some of the windows are gone, but you can see the incredible strength of the Halifax by the fact that the main spar and much of the fuselage have withstood this extraordinary lift from 750 feet down. What time is it, Jeff? I missed my airplane. It's 10, 15 minutes to take off. But we're taking off here, and this is the better takeoff for me. Another stunning setback. The special towing sled had been smashed, and now someone had to figure out how to lift the plane off the rocks. The next morning, Carl returns from Canada to see the Halifax for the first time. Well, there you have it, folks. An exciting adventure, more to come in the shows ahead. And uh, we thank you for uh, following us, watching us, liking us and if you need to we hope you are considering donating to us uh, helping us with saving halifaxes for the aviation world and for canada if you look and read the credits here it will show you where to go to donate and please uh, spread this around to all your people we're doing great things here. We want to uh, just make sure that we have your support. This is a very expensive work. We're doing it all uh, with uh, sweat equity. We're getting it done, but we do need your donations and support. And next week, I'll have more exciting news about engines, propellers, uh, airframe, wings, and all of this is part of the Halifax 57 Rescue Show. Thanks for watching. And remember, we leave no Halifax behind.